So with the agent swing well underway, we had a little bit of a crazy week this week because the rankings sort of came out, I guess, midway through the week because tournament finished on Tuesday for the ATP, which was really strange. But that's why we're doing the ranking show on a Wednesday instead of a Monday. Let's go have a look at, though, who actually won last week because the Asian swing started and we had some big wins. So starting on the WTA side, we had a WTA 500 in Korea and it was a Dadj Meyer winning against Kazakina, 166461. And she got a big boost in the rankings after that 500 points. And over in Thailand, we had Shrimkova winning against Sigamund 6464 to lift her first trophy of the season. Over on the men's side, an ATP 250 in China, we had Zong beating Musetti in the final 7661 to lift his first trophy. And he got a massive boost in the rankings because of that. And again, another one in China, an ATP 250, Marin Cilic becoming the lowest ranked ATP champion in the open era, beating Zong in the final 7676. Of course, Cilic coming back from injury and he got a massive boost in the rankings. Probably the biggest boost in the rankings we've seen by anyone this year. I'll start with the players that are outside the top 10 who have gone up in the rankings. And no surprise, it was the champions of last week. Hadaj Meyer, she went up five spots to number 12 in the world, getting closer to that top 10 and puts her name in the race of the finals as well. We'll talk about that soon. Zong, he goes up 15 spots to number 52 in the world after winning that first title. And Marin Cilic, he's gone up 565 places to number 212 in the world after winning his first trophy in a while. And like I said, he's the lowest ranked player to win an A to B title in the open era. So huge historic moment for Marin Cilic there and do some ways to go to the top 100, but he is getting back into form real quick. Players that went down to the rankings, we had Azarenka. She went down four spots to number 23 in the world after losing a bunch of points from this time last year. Karin Hashinov, he went down four spots as well to number 27 in the world. And Garcia, she went down seven spots to number 36 in the world after losing a bunch of points from this time last year. So some players there that we're used to seeing sort of up the top of the game, or at least around that top 10 mark, dropping some points and losing some spots. All right, let's start on the WTA side of things and no real changes to the top of the top 10, which Fiontek at one and Sebeling at two, Pagula at three, and Rabakuna at four, with Palini at five, Goff at six, Zhang stays at seven, and Navarro at eight. But Maria Sakkari, she drops out of the top ten after dropping a thousand points from Guadalajara last year, dropping down eight spots outside the top ten, making way for Collins to go up to number nine, and Krajikova back in the top ten this week. So I know a lot of people are asking, how is Sakkari in the top ten? The reason why was because of those thousand points in Guadalajara. Those have dropped off now, and she has fallen out of the top ten. But with a thousand points on the line coming up this week, expect some more changes there to the top 10 because the Asian swing has a lot of points on offer. So let's have a look at the race of the finals now with no big changes. Fiontek and Sabalenka at 1 and 2 still the only two players qualified. Rabakina at 3 and Paolini at 4. Pagula at 5 with Goff at 6. Navarro at 7. Collins at 8. Zhang at 9. And Krajikova of course. She actually dropped down a spot to number 11 but she does still have that Wimbledon which will get her qualified anyway. So there's still only 5 spots up for grabs. Krajikova of course doesn't have to be in the top 8 because of that Wimbledon win unless she does drop out of the top 20 which would be pretty crazy. I mean, there's a lot of points between her and number 20 to drop down, but the Grand Slam rule coming into effect, and Krajikova staying there for now. But like I said, we've got two big tournaments coming up with 2,000 points combined on the line, so expect some of these players, especially those players over 4,000 points, to start qualifying in the next couple of weeks. Over on the men's side of things, and again, no changes because most of the players in the top 10 were playing Labor Cup, which is not worth any points. Sinner at 1, Zverev at 2, Elkris at 3, and Djokovic at 4, Medvedev comes in at 5 with Rublev at 6, Fritz at 7, Herkatch at 8, Rude at number 9, and Dimitrov rounds out the top 10 for this week. But Beijing's coming up this week, and so is Tokyo. Both worth 500 points. And then, of course, Shanghai worth 1,000 points. So we should see some changes to these rankings over the next couple of weeks because there is a lot of points on the line. Let's go to the race to Turin now. And again, only the three players qualified with Sinner at 1, Zverev at 2, and Elkris at 3. The only three players qualified so far. Medvedev still at number 4. Not too far away. If he does play pretty well over the Asian swing, he should be able to qualify. With Fritz at 5, Root at 6, Rublev at 7, Dimonor at 8, Djokovic at 9 and Dimitrov rounds at the top 10 so no changes there but like I said Beijing on the line also Shanghai coming up Tokyo as well with a lot of points expect some changes over the next couple weeks so there you go those are the rankings for this week no major changes there weren't too many points on the line just a couple of changes there to the top at the end of the top 10 especially on the women's side but let me know down in the comments below who's going to win the tournaments coming up that's what I want to know from you guys who's going to win in Tokyo Beijing and then in Shanghai and also in Wuhan for the ladies because there's a lot of points up for grabs for all the players involved but those are the rankings this week not too many changes but expect changes over the next few weeks.